Hello everyone, today I am excited to share some new updates that are coming to WIST and I'm going to share those in four different sections. I want to talk about the new UI and branding you, that you will see through WIST. I want to talk about the new elements and events system that we're launching that replaces actions. I want to talk about a few quality of life improvements. And lastly, I want to talk about our next steps when focusing on education. So first of all, you've probably seen it, but we've got a nice UI redesign. And there were there are a few reasons behind this, but the main reason is that we wanted WIST to be professional. We want this tool not only to be a hobbyist tool where you just build things for fun, we want this tool to become the go-to for anybody who wants to build web applications in Webflow, which means that we must ensure that it has a more mature and professional look. And this UI reflects it. Now we've got this unified color scheme that it's more developer friendly and that it's closer to all the rest of Finsu products. Not only we've changed how the UI looks and feels, we've also changed some of these layouts. One of the things that you will probably notice is that now we've got a sidebar on the right. That's because now we are in a two sidebar system, very close to what Webflow uses. On the left, we've got everything related to navigating on a project. Same as before, we've got all the panels with our items. When opening the items, these items are gonna open on the right side because all the context editing is gonna happen on this right sidebar. So now when you're editing an item like an app or a request, you can work on that on this right sidebar, which means that you can keep navigating the project without losing the context of the item that you're working with. But let's get into the biggest update in this release, which is the new elements and events system. What previously was just actions, now has been split in two different things, which is elements and events. And there's a reason for that. Previously, actions were just everything in your project. It contained everything related to updating elements, listening for events, triggering change of actions, etc. That's not really the best way to maintain and scale up your projects because in our applications, we've got two different sides. We've got the state-driven side of the application and we've got the event side driven of the application. And both these systems work together to create the interactive web applications that you know and love. So let's dive into first, what's the difference between state driven and event driven? The state driven side of your application defines the system at any given moment. That includes variables, cookies, parameters, requests, and all this group defines how your users are seeing and interacting your app. Any changes in the state triggers the corresponding updates, and that it's done by WIST automatically. Now let's move into the band-driven side of applications. Events cause changes in the state of the system. Essentially, an event is when X happens, change the state to Y, or do Y action. And that's why we talk about event actions, because an event contains two things. It contains a trigger, and it contains a sequence of actions that happen after that trigger. And those actions can update the state to then make sure that your application is reflecting the new updated version. So I'm going to open here my elements panel and you will see how we've got now two lists in here. One contains the elements on this page and one contains the elements on other pages. That means that I can easily see where the elements of my application are currently being used across my whole website. So how about we do a very simple counter? I'm gonna select my counter output, and here you're gonna see how elements now have two different tabs on the right. We've got the element settings, which means that it's the state-driven side of elements. And we've got the event tabs, but we're gonna see that in a second. So let's define that this element always displays the value of a variable. So I'm gonna select this element, and I'm gonna come in here and you will see how I've got all the settings for the element. I've got visibility, text, list, CSS classes, inline styles, HTML attributes. I just need to come here and say text, and this is gonna be return v.count, which in this case we've defined previously. Now we've got the value of v.count being displayed in here. If we come in here, 
you're gonna see how we've got a variable that it's vita count and it's currently zero. We can open the data store if we want to, and we can change this value to another value. And you're gonna see that anytime that I change this, this new value is gonna be automatically reflected by WIST. That's because this value, it's tied to a piece of state. Our element, it's always going to be displaying the value of V count. Now, let's use events. I'm gonna come here again, and I'm going to select my counter up element. And in this case, now that we've selected it, I want to listen to click events. So I just need to go to the events tab and I want to add a new event. When adding a new event, I can define any event. It can be one of these or it can be any random event, but in this case, it's gonna be my event of click. And I can now add actions. And actions are essentially what we said, that it's a sequence of things that happen after an event is triggered. So in this case, what I wanna do is I want to set the variable to a new value. So I want to update the V count to be return V count plus one, like that. And just like that, if we now test this, you're gonna see how by clicking on count plus one, we are incrementing the value. Same for counter down. I can come here, I can add an event, click event, and then I can set a variable of V count to a specific value of V count minus one, like that. So now we've got a clear distinction between what's a state-driven side of the elements, which in this case would be the counter output that is displaying this value, and the event-driven side of the elements, which is that when we click on the elements, we're changing a piece of state. Now, we've seen element settings, we've seen element events, but we also have global events. So in this case, it's what previously would be just event actions. We can create events and these events can have a trigger. In this case, are global triggers. So I could select, for example, a custom condition and I could say when, when counter is greater than 10, for example. So in that case, I can, again, add a condition that it's gonna be viva count is greater than 10. And when this specific condition happens, this event will fire and any actions can run. So in this case, I can decide to, for example, run a function and put some confetti. For example, like this. So if we test this again, I'm gonna go to my data store and I will change this state to let's say five. And now let's try to count up and you will see how the moment that it goes higher than 10, we are running this global event. But events are not tied to just running one action after the event fires. We can run multiple of those actions. So for example, not only I wanna show some confetti, I also want to, let's say, do a console log like that and say, going over 10. And because these actions happen in sequence, now it's also possible to reorder them because the order is important. Now let's imagine that instead of canceling log after the confetti happens, which is what's happening now, if you check this, we can do it the other way around and we can first console log it. And after that, we can run the confetti. So you can create as many actions as you want. You can reorder those actions. And that applies both to global events and to element events. Now it's possible to run multiple actions after a specific element event is fired. So in here, again, I could set the variable, but I could add more and more and more actions in sequence, and I could reorder them as mentioned. So because now we can run multiple actions when a specific event is fired, this means that projects that before used many different of the previous actions can be optimized a lot. And let me show you one example. Here I've got an example of a sign-in form, and this form does three different things. It listens for submit events, and then after that, it triggers a request to the server to sign in, and once that request finishes, it sets a cookie, and then it navigates the user to the homepage. Previously, this would have taken three different actions to implement, but this now can happen inside a single element event. So you can see here, I've got my submit event, 
and after the event, we can do many event actions. So in this case, this sequence, it's I'm going to perform a request, then I will set a cookie based on the response, and then I'm going to navigate to the homepage only if the request was successful. Essentially, every single action that is happening here, every single event action that is happening, happens in sequence. So one step will only start after the previous step has finished. With this, your projects can be more optimized and organized because now pieces of logic that belong together live under a single place instead of multiple different places. Let's talk about some of the quality of logic improvements that we've also included in this update. The first thing that you probably noticed while I was demonstrating the previous concepts is that we've got a new function editor. This function editor is now floating and can be dragged and can be resized so you can put it exactly wherever it fits you in your workflows. From here, we've got all the controls of the function editor right here at the top. You can evaluate a piece of state at any moment. You can open the data store, which I'm gonna show you now in a second. You can also format your code. You can also access the documentation directly from here. And lastly, you can decide to wrap or not wrap the lines of the code. So let's switch into seeing the actual data store. I'm going to go and open my data store and you will notice how we've got a new expand button in here. This expand button opens the data store and this data store essentially reflects the whole state of your application exactly as we explained it before. So the state of my application can now be expanded, collapse it, I can navigate and explore every single piece of state that is defining my current system. Not only that, but I can update any of those values. So for example, if I wanted to test something, instead of having to go in the canvas using the application by yourself, you can simply change that piece of state directly from here, and you can see how WIST automatically updates everything for you. The last thing that I wanna show you is that all the panels on the left are now resizable. I can grab the handle of any of the panels on the left, and I can drag it horizontally to change the size. This means that if there's any long name or something that it's hard for you to see, you can simply just change the width in here and it's gonna help you. Last thing to mention in this video is that we have now a big focus on education. This launch comes not only with these UI updates and functionalities, we're also launching a new documentation site. New documentation explaining how to go from zero to a hundred to go from nothing to knowing how to build a web application using Webflow and WIST. Plus in the close feature, we're gonna be launching a series of education videos that will help you become a better developer. So that's it from my side. Thank you for watching this video. I'm excited for this update and see you soon. Goodbye.